All right. So today we are joined by cult film legends, Peaches Christ and Mink Stoll. How are you both doing today? Great. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good. It's a, it's um, You're in very, very yeah. damp Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. I hear there's like a bunch of rain out there right now. A bunch. Big God. bags. Are- God, that sucks. And I'm here in the Midwest in the St. Louis area. And for once, it's actually nice and sunny because it's been cloudy <laughs> for like two weeks in a row. In a row. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. Yes. So damn. Spring is right around the corner. Yes. <laughs> so, Peaches, Mink, tell me, what can we expect from your brand new cabaret tour, Idol Worship? On excitement, lots of glamour, lots of glitz, fireworks, <laughs> dancing boys. No, none of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, fun. Well, fun. Oh, at least yeah. fun, yeah. Fun. You, you can expect fun. fun. Fun film clips, uh, music, songs. I would say intimacy is one thing that I think makes the show special. Both Mink and I have performed luckily in big, big auditoriums and houses, but this show, uh, and it was by design, you know, was created to be an evening with, you know, and I always think when you hear an evening with, it's like, it should be intimate. It should be, you know, uh, there shouldn't be a fourth wall. She and I have a lot of conversations. Of course, I get her to spill as much tea as she's willing to about, you know, making all those iconic movies. We screen movie clips, we sing songs, and there might be some surprises. But we're with the audience. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are talking we're talking to each other but we're also engaged with the audience okay. it's not an audience but we know they're there and we want them to know that we know that they're there and that we're glad yeah fantastic now this tour only has six stops across the country any plans to add more or make this production a bigger spectacle well we've talked yeah, about that, there's, one more there's, city there's, we've there's, talked about adding a city but not on this particular there is a, sit, a city we're going to go to in June, um, which I, I, I don't think they'd care if I, if I say it, but it's going to be Atlanta, okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and so the way that, well, basically Mink very smartly sets boundaries. And, you know, Mink is a newly married woman. I am. Yeah. And so we, <laughs> this, this actually well, started, newly I'm married. newly married as well. Yeah, we're both newly married. <laughs> we started doing this show pre-marriage, Okay. Uh, both of us. And we actually had, uh, in 2020, a plan to go to London to do the show there. And of course, that was in, I think, March of 2020, we were supposed we to were go. We were supposed to go, <laughs> yeah. And then we all know what happened. We all know and, what happened. And I was in such denial. I was, I am going to London. This is a joke. This is a fluke. Yeah. This is crazy. Nobody, I was in such denial over COVID. But, well, and, 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 and then, and then, you know, it wasn't, I mean, then I got it. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't get COVID. I got what the <laughs> <fluke. laughs> yeah. I'm okay, honey. Yeah, yeah good, good, good. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. But but we we were supposed to do it then, and so coming out of it, I said to her, "Let's do an idol worship tour." And she said, "I would like to do it, but let's do it in two week increments." And so this is our first um, yeah. iteration, and we're going to see how it goes. But okay. the plan would be that we would, you know, maybe for for years to come, we would just add places and go to different regions. And you know, if someone's really interested in seeing the show, you know, they should reach out and come. You know. Yeah, get in touch. Con- contact us. Yeah, we have done it, and uh, we've done uh, the original. You know, the the first version of it, which is mm-hmm. different from what we're doing now. There are things that are similar, but it's a different show. Um, but we've done it in Provincetown, Provincetown we've Chicago, done it in Chicago, Jacksonville, um, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah so ra- random places. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and what so do you? Map. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you always hope audiences take away from this show? We want them to have a good time. Okay. We want them to come away feeling, you know, like they're validated, we're validated, everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically fun. Yeah, I want them to, you know, selfishly, I think what I'm trying to do is kind of put on, a sh- and I do this through my whole career, is to put on a show that's really designed to satiate fans okay. and, and the obsessed fans of Minx and you know, all these movies that she's in and they are obsessed. I mean, people will show up and they'll have tattoos of Connie Marble on their arms and they know every line to every movie she's been in. And so it's a show that she wouldn't necessarily make because it's about worshiping what she's done. And so 
it's 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 an evening of fun, but also an evening of celebrating this thing that we all love, which which is her in these movies. Which yeah. is, yeah. You know, I mean, I I was uh, you know I've said this before. I, I being an idol is wonderfully gratifying, but at the same time, it's a little bit scary because idols can topple. <laughs> so you know, I don't want to end up a shattered ball of concrete on the sidewalk. One day. But it's but this is fun. This is a great deal of fun, and it, you know, seeing all these clips put together, it's like I'm, I'm always startled. I did that. Oh my god, I did that. Oh, that was pretty good. So it's you know, with in all humility, it's I must say it's very gratifying to me. Mm, for sure, looking back at your career on that, yeah, definitely. And so you two have been close friends for over two decades. What do you enjoy the most about working with each other? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, what I really love working with, Joshua is one of the most, well, possibly with maybe one exception, and that would be John Waters, the most professional person I've ever worked with. I feel completely comfortable. I feel safe. If he says he's going to do something, he does it. Not only that, he's incredibly funny. He puts together, he writes, well, sometimes he's funny. Um, <laughs> you know, he's, I'll give a big he, he, He's funny, he's smart, and we just enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's just, you know, surreal to this day that, you know, uh, I get to work with Mink and that we become friends, like real friends, you know, like. Genuine friends. Yeah, I mean, we when I first invited her to come do Midnight Mass, it was, you know, she was the first, she was the first icon to ever agree to come up and be, you know, um, worshipped on stage at Midnight okay. Mass, you know, okay. in San Francisco. And it changed, she really changed my life, you know, because it showed me um, a, a new and bigger way that I could produce events, especially events around cult movies. And so, you know, Mink ended up being someone that I worked with then consistently for, you know, the last We've done Two stage decades. shows together, uh, stage shows that, that Joshua has written, we've done together. Great, Return to Great Garden was a real fun thing to do. Mm. And um, we made a and movie made together. A movie together, yeah. All About Evil, yeah. so, which I said yes to before I even saw the script. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, things are, it's good. Yeah, you're more than friends, you're chosen family, it seems like. Yes, we are. Yeah, for sure, I mean, Mink, uh, officiated and married my husband and I last year. So really? you know, nice. yeah. yeah, that was a big honor. I enjoyed that a lot. That's awesome. Fantastic. And you are both staples in the queer cult cinema world. So my question here is with so much anti LGBTQ plus and anti drag rhetoric going on right now, what do you think the future of that looks like right now? I look at this I'm, I typically uh, see things um, through an optimistic point of view. And so with all this darkness, and it is really dark and it is ridiculous, you know, that we are, um, you know, being regularly accused of being pedophiles, you know, and mm -hmm. all this, these old school tropes about us being, being trotted out. To me, the, 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 the silver lining is, it's a desperate last gasp, you know, these bigots, know that they are no longer able to indoctrinate their children the same way because their kids have the internet and their kids figure out that gay people aren't the devil, you know, and drag queens aren't evil. And so with all of the popularity that's come along with, you know, things like drag race and just, you know, queers being shown in media, I think this is the response. And it's this ridiculous, last, desperate gasp you know, to try to get hatred to win. And I don't, I don't think it's going to, I think that ship has sailed. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think there will be a backlash to the backlash. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, you know, the pen, they're trying as hard as they can to swing the pendulum, Yeah, you know, in one direction. And it's, it, you know, if you swing it over here too far, it's going to swing right back. Mm -hmm. And young people want, they want expression. They want to be themselves. They they want to have fun. They want to have a good time. They don't want to be told that mm. what they're doing is bad. Mm. So I mean, we never did. When I was young, I didn't want to be told that what I was doing is bad, and I was. Mm. So, um, but there there will be, I think, and without getting into too too much politics, I was I've talked about this a lot. People have to vote, and they have to vote locally. Yeah, they have to they have to vote for the school board president. They have to vote for city council people. It's you know, starts at home. Yeah. yeah, they have to start at home. 
And, but I think that they are, but I think, you know, the local elections just don't get much attention, but they really matter. Yeah. So I, I do think that there is a swell of um, young people. I mean, all with non-binary and all this, it's amazing to me how quickly the they, them became automatically accepted. Yeah. When you couldn't be gay forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it took yeah, the kids years are, and years and years, but everybody says they, them now. I, mm -hmm. I get confused yeah. <laughs> because I'm old, but, but it has become an absolutely accept, well accepted in the world that I live in. I think there's, there's a large part of the population. That but, but to young people, it is totally mostly accepted. It's you know, and I think yeah. that drives bigoted parents nuts. No. You know, it just drives them crazy. And it's like, these kids, they don't care. They don't care that their classmate might be gay. They don't care that their classmate might be trans or pansexual. They don't care. And I'm talking about like, I have nieces in the Midwest, right? I have nieces in Indiana, go, you know, who are growing up Mormon who don't care. don't care. And that drives their parents crazy. Cause these parents, so I actually think that the, uh, all that hatred if you want to, you can choose to look at it in this sort of positive way where it's like, oh, they are just fighting. But guess what? You know, media is not turning back. These young people aren't turning back, you know. Um, and it, you know, it is gonna be an ugly battle because, you know, yeah. I, I, there are states like Florida who can succeed at putting legislation on the books, but you know, that's temporary. Don't yeah. be too discouraged, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely, I agree. And then there are some uh, queer, queer cult classics, a, a lot of John Waters films that do have some kind of grotesque topics and themes and visuals. What is your take when people say that some of these films give LGBTQ plus representation a bad rep? Uh, they're wrong. <laughs> Just they're wrong. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there's no deliberate LGBTQ representation in any of the movies, they're just stories. Yeah. You know, and they're not, they're certainly not documentaries. <laughs> well, and if anything, if you really look at it with any sort of critical lens, mm -hmm. the LGBTQ people in these things are often, um, if you even choose to look at Divine as LGBTQ, to me, Divine is usually playing a straight woman. Yeah. And, you know, it's a lampoon of straight culture. It's actually a parody and a mirror to straight society. And so when you watch a movie, especially something like Polyester, it's a critique of suburban of living, suburban, yes, you know, and suburban war. And, yes. and so I actually, I love the way that those movies work, but you know, of course people, I mean, people think I'm terrible, you know, and, and you know, that I'm, a, I give gay people a bad name or whatever. Mm. I'm fine with that. In, <laughs> in Pink Flamingos, it's the strange family that is the good, they're the good ones. Yeah, yeah. right. So they're the good guys. Divine and her strange family. They're the great people. They love each other. They're kind. Mm -hmm. You know, the great couple, the hetero couple, the right, you know, Connie and Marvel, Connie and Raymond Marvel, they're awful. Yeah. They're terrible people. Yeah. So, you know, there is a, a real a flip mm -hmm. of values here. So it's I, I think um John tells me that there's been he gets flack from he has gotten flack from lesbians over the um castration scene in Desperate Living. Oh, really? But I don't. Well, I just did a screening of Desperate Living, which is was in Tucson, of all places. And it was with these young, radical, I mean, we're talking radical queer drag performers. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so nuts. And I loved it because here I am in Arizona and they are wild and they are built. The, the reason they brought me there is they're doing a fundraiser to build a queer, did I tell you this? A yeah. queer trailer park. With, with, you know, run by drag queens, like a weird queer commune. It, I mean, almost sounds cult like. Queer, you tell yeah. Me. <laughs> but, you know, but in a John Waters universe. And, and so the audience for this, this screening of Desperate Living, so many young punk rock lesbians, you know, which I love, you yeah. know, because they get the irony of it. They get, they get that it's comedy for them. It's mm -hmm. not laughing at them, if that yeah. makes sense. And not just lesbians, but trans folks, non-binary folks. I mean, that's who we're putting on the event. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually think Gen Z might have more of a sense of humor than millennials. 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I can see so both ways. Yeah. I don't even know if I know any. Do I know any Gen Z people? Maybe. Uh, maybe. I don't have anything against them. It's just I'm very old now. <laughs> it's different generations, different generations. <laughs> And working with John Waters, especially you, Mink, I mean, you're considered a dreamlander and have been in all of his films to date. What all of his features? I all of his to... features, yeah, all of his features to date, yeah. What has it been like working with the mind of John Waters? Well, you know, I I was so young when I started <laughs> that I don't think I even really appreciated how twisted, and you know, I mean, his his take on the world. It was so funny, you know, I mean, he was so funny, but I don't think it really quite got to me. I mean, I grew up Catholic and Catholics have a twisted view of the world anyway. Oh, definitely. I'm Catholic. Yeah. I'm Catholic. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. you know, we're told all hell is fire and you get hit yeah. by a bus and you don't say the act of contrition, you go to hell forever. If you ate a piece of bacon on a Friday. I mean, there's so many things that are so severe in Catholicism that I grew up with all kinds of distortions. So John's distortions were just different, but I, I was always just laughing. You know, I read a script and I just start laughing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I didn't realize completely how subversive we were being. Yeah. It didn't really occur to me. I just thought we were, it was funny. Just funny. Yeah. 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 And it features uh, your film, All About Evil, was uh, made worldwide availability now. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it's it's it always had distribution in other countries, like but but random, mm -hmm. you know, um, like it had a German distributor and a Japanese distributor, um, <laughs> but then it wouldn't be available in other places. And then last two years ago, now there was yeah. a big sort of push to to do a re-release, and so AMC picked it up um so it's on their amc plus and uh shutter net networks and then severin uh the distributor did a big beautiful blu-ray for it so it's nice because it's sort of now spreading even further around the world okay it is a fun movie. I, I, yeah i saw it it's a fun yeah but but i really like this one mm, definitely do you have any plans to direct any more films like this please yeah we actually that's one of the big things sort of during the pandemic was like, I had the time mm -hmm. to sort of come up with some new movie ideas and get to writing. And I'm developing a feature film with my um, Midnight Mass podcast uh, collaborator, Michael Verratti. So we've been writing a script. And all I'll say is it's the drag queen gore horror movie that I think people expect or want me to make. And I finally had an idea that I liked enough you know, that was like, okay, this is this is the movie. And so um, you can probably guess who's gonna be in it, but most of my drag family members who've achieved some notoriety or success have signed on to be in the movie. So we are working on that. Awesome, fantastic. All right, Peaches, well, how can one stay up to date with you? Uh, I'm on, you know, well, I got off Twitter because of Mr. Musk. I just couldn't handle it anymore. Just so nauseated living in San Francisco, Everything he pulled, I mean, they're all terrible, but it was just, it was egregious. So I'm no longer on X, um, but I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And then, of course, I have a website, peacheschrist.com. Okay, perfect. And Mink, how can one stay up to date with you? You kind of can't. <laughs> you have to come to the show. To to the show. <laughs> I, I have a Facebook page, but more people post on it than I ever do. I, you know, I'm not got, I've yeah. been posting about the show, but... <clears throat> I live a very private life these days. Okay. So okay. I, I I pop out every now and then, but I'm you know I'm a newlywed, so I'm at home with my husband. There you go. That's all that matters, as you should be. Well, perfect. All right, then. Before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you would like to mention or plug at this time? Um, I really don't have much. No, I mean, I think you know I'm really focusing on this idol worship show. Um, like I said, we're going to extend it. And the other projects that I have are, are so uh, bizarre. You know, I do an immersive haunted attraction at the, the San Francisco Mint Building and I do symphony shows with different different symphony orchestras now. <laughs> um, and all of that stuff you can, you know, find on my social media. And I was, anybody who's coming to LA, if they haven't already, or live here who haven't already seen it, the John Waters Pope of Trash 
exhibit at the Academy Museum is so worth seeing. Mm -hmm. It is not only is the artwork and the costumes and, and all of that really wonderful, but the old film clips, mm -hmm. our history is there. I mean, it's stuff from the very first movie he ever made. Nice. You know, from Hag in the Black Leather Jacket and Roman it's, Candles. It's it, beyond. It's, it's really, if you care about, you know, the John Waters and, the, and what he has accomplished, mm -hmm. it really is worth seeing how it got started. Okay, perfect. All right, we will keep that in mind. Perfect.